So it's telling me um, these are the uh, vectors B and A. And it's having me calculate the sum of these two vectors and represent them in the unit vector notation. And you can actually think of this uh, as the Cartesian coordinates. They end up being the same. And it's uh, then for part B, it's having me calculate the difference of the two. So, okay, uh, let me start by drawing my uh, coordinate axis. That will give me uh, something to illustrate these vectors with. And I see that they have uh, a lot of these minus signs. So uh, let me uh, draw my coordinate axis that way. That gives me lots of room to go in the negative direction. So, and let me draw a little bit of a grid since it looks like I may need to count some of them. You don't really have to do it, but when I draw diagrams, I uh, prefer to, and I try to draw one that makes reasonable sense. Because um, <laughs> if you draw one that doesn't make a reasonable sense, there are sometimes chances for a diagram to mislead you. Whereas if you draw something that's roughly to scale, then um, it'll be less likely for your diagrams to mislead you. So as I'm answering part A, let me illustrate a graphical vector addition method that's called head to tail method. Head to tail method of uh, vector addition. It's uh, uh, quite simple once you know it. So you draw uh, two vectors that you're using, one after another, head to tail. So let me draw uh, vector A first. So Vector A has a minus 9 x hat, and this x hat and y hat, they refer to the unit vectors. So this is the x hat, vector of unit length, pointing in the direction of positive x. And this is y hat, a vector of another unit length in the direction of positive y direction, positive x and positive y. So uh, the the vector a it has the its x component is minus nine so i'm going in the opposite direction from the uh, x hat so let me count one two three four five six seven eight nine um, and then it has a y component of minus five so i'm again going in the opposite direction from y hat one two three four five so my a vector will lead me somewhere here. And you can actually look at this as its own vector addition thing. Uh, I think I give the presentation in one of the lectures, but let me not waste too much time with that. I'll just say this is my A vector. So now I need to draw my B vector. And for the head to tail method of vector addition, I don't, um, so I could uh, draw them to have the same origin. And in the head to tail method, you explicitly don't. Uh, for my vector B, I'm going to have a start from the end of a vector A. So from this position, I'm going to count off minus two. So one, two in the negative direction. And I'm going to count off minus eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I need one more. Eight. My vector B will be starting from here and going on additional displacement of minus two in the x direction and minus eight in the y direction. This is my vector B. So that's the head to tail method. And the answer you get is quite simple because you are simply adding the components together. So minus two plus minus nine, minus 11, minus eight plus minus five, minus 13, you're done. The magnitude is where, um, I think this is where this drawing is maybe a little bit helpful. Let me just move this label so that I can draw the graphical representation of the resultant vector from the origin all the way to the end where the B vector ends up after being added to the A vector. So this is the vector that we would represent as A plus B. And to get the magnitude of this, we use a Pythagorean theorem. So you imagine a right triangle. You can draw this right triangle two different ways. You can either draw it this way, hypotenuse, 
x portion of the leg, y portion of the leg, or you can draw it this way with the x portion of the leg and then y portion of the leg and then hypotenuse. Either way, the, the length of the hypotenuse ends up being the same. So you have these lengths of the legs that's going to be ax plus bx, the x components of the two vectors that we're adding, and the y components that we're adding, ay plus by. These are actually these numbers that I calculated here. And Pythagorean theorem says that the magnitude of the hypotenuse, um, or to be more uh, specific, that thing squared is equal to the x component. Uh, let me do the subscript notation. So this thing, subscript, x component of the resultant, uh, squared plus the y component of the resultant, squared. So the magnitude here will be the square root of, let me just write out the numbers, minus 11 squared, or same thing as 11 squared, plus uh, minus 13 squared, or same thing as 13 squared. So that's going to be the magnitude, A plus B. Um, can I do this in my head? don't think I can. I mean, I can do the um, square part, 121 plus, I think it's 169. Um, and when they add, uh, uh, do they, they end up as something that's a perfect square? I don't think they do. Uh, 290. Yeah, all right. I got to do that in the calculator. So let me bring my calculator here. <laughs> 290 square root it. Um, so 70.03. Okay, um, part B is, uh, oh wait, uh, I forgot. Direction in degrees relative to the plus x axis. So this is where drawing is really helpful because um, we do have handy formulas that will get us these acute angles. If you're either looking for this acute angle or maybe this acute angle, depending on which one you prefer, um, you, you do have handy formulas. If you want to get this acute angle, you can say tangent of phi is equal to a y plus b y, the opposite over adjacent, a x plus b x, and uh, you use arctangent of this ratio to get phi. Now, you can do that, and getting this acute angle is easy. The problem here is uh, that's not the angle that the question is asking for. It's because it's asking for relative to plus x-axis. So it's asking for either this angle, theta, or I guess uh, it could be potentially this angle. Um, <laughs> so let me, for the time being, let me not be difficult and assume that it's asking for theta. <laughs> then. Uh, Having drawn this diagram, I can see that the angle we'll want is um, it's going to be 180 degrees uh, from plus x to minus x and then phi. So this angle will be 180 degrees plus phi. And I think uh, depending on how you got through trigonometry, some people might give you some formulas that starts with uh, locating things in different quadrants. And um, I don't know how much value there is in memorizing those. The, the, what I would recommend is draw the figure. And once you draw the figure and label things, you will naturally see how things should be. So, uh, so, so let me do this calculation here, arc tangent of ay over, uh, or the y component over b comp x component. So the y components, 13, over the x component, 11, equals that. And let me take the arc tangent, trigonometry second, inverse tangent, and I think I'm in degree mode, so 49.76. Uh, degrees. That's my phi. Uh, my theta is this angle plus 180. So plus 180 is equal to 229.8. 229.8. 
Or if you want it to be difficult, <laughs> you could subtract 360 from it, and that should also be correct. Uh, I don't know if uh, the system will treat it as correct. Uh, so let me just have it ready, and uh, let me plug it in and see. Uh, minus 130.2. Uh, minus 130.2 degrees. Let's see. Um, I, I'm just curious if the system will treat that as correct. I think it should, but you know, if it doesn't, then it's not necessarily an error in the question because, again, I'm being difficult. 17.03. Let's see. Minus 130.2. Uh, if uh, it'll say that's correct. Uh, yeah, again, I'm being difficult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I I do say this in another video that it's one of the downsides of my open math or using on an um, algorithmically graded system. The upside is that it'll give you an immediate feedback telling you if you got something right or wrong. But the immediate feedback is being given by a dumb system. Sometimes the also question writers can anticipate what common alternate response or common wrong answers might be and give you a feedback that corresponds to that. But it kind of depends on the question writer um, individually thinking about those alternate scenarios. The system, a human grader, if they saw this, they would have recognized, oh, that's the same thing as this. But um, when your answer is being graded by dumb system, you have to figure out if that might be what's happening. So one, so one thing that I do, because you have that, is I do give you practically infinite tries and uh, 100 tries it should be practically infinite so you know if you gave this answer then uh, you might think about um, oh what other answer might the system grade as correct and arrive at this answer so okay so let me do part b so um or let me actually do this i want complete part b i'll just uh, tell you how part b can be thought of as just uh, another version of part a because uh, this is how the question gave you this uh, um, question, A minus B. But in some sense, this is not really any different from A um, in a more abstract general sense. Because this could have been represented this way as A plus a vector. That's uh, minus B. So all these steps that I went through, adding two vectors together, you can go through those exact same steps again, except not using B, but using the vector minus B. Minus B would be, well, this vector except uh, multiplied by minus one. So that would be plus two X hat plus eight Y hat. So I think you might end up on a different quadrant with the numbers I have. I guess you would end up on a quadrant two, I think, a negative x components and positive y components. So, um, so with this one adjustment, the steps you go through for part B is basically the same as part A. So I'll leave that to you. I won't do that myself.